is are you able to see the syllabus can you all see the syllabus yes what about poldraj is it clear is the voice and the screen clear okay now the first part consists of system property work and heat interaction zero flow first flow application of first flow to flow system then thermodynamic properties of fluids second law and entropy related terms such as uh, carnot cycle clausius inequality etc then we will go on to derive the clausius clapeyron equation then after this forms the majority of the basis of all the study that is a thermodynamics part thermodynamics part then we move on to power engineering we will study little bit of power engineering that is uh, the steam power cycles gas turbine cycles ic engines some basic concepts regarding ic engines auto cycle diesel cycle etc then the final part is the mixtures thermodynamics of mixtures mixing process and psychrometry that is related to air conditioning psychrometry related to air condition this is what is there in the group a part and after covering group a we move on to group b which is nothing but the heat transfer heat transfer section it is related to the study of heat transfer that is the different modes of heat transfer are conduction convection and radiation so these three modes of heat transfer are discussed in detail in group b that is conduction you will learn and derive some basic equations related to heat transfer with that you need to formulate the expression for spin as yes, what do you mean by spin do you know what is meant by spin a yes, spin car those extended surfaces yes that are extended surfaces which you can see in your vehicles in your bikes you can see near the engine there are certain extended surfaces like this very thin plate have you noticed very thin section on the surface of the engine you can see some thin sections like this okay for this represents the pins so pins are used for heat transfer then coming to the convection that is more of the fluid heat transfer you will be studying the boundary layer the thermal momentum and heat transfer hydrodynamic boundary layer and the thermal boundary layer and little bit of turbulence flow some correlation regarding the nusselt number and heat transfer coefficient h then finally heat exchangers the lmtd logarithmic mean temperature difference ntu methods etc and finally we move on to the radiation part in which we will define certain specific terms such as emissivity uh, radiosity and then find out the uh, radiation heat exchange between two surfaces and the related problem so as you know this is basically a problem oriented subject the there will be a lot of tutorials that i have prepared and we will be doing those tutorials as we complete session by section okay so this is the overall view of the syllabus that is consists of group a basically of cd thermodynamics and power engineering and the next group b that is heat transfer okay now shall we start we will have a just introductory introduction class today okay so what is meant by thermodynamics how can you define thermodynamics from this name can you give some say ways to define thermodynamics thermo means what thermo what is meant by thermo it is thermometer you might have heard yes thermometer yes it is related to heat it is related to heat and dynamics means dynamics means it is nothing but somewhat related to motion okay motion movement or movement okay 
movement or motion of substances. So you can see that thermodynamics is basically, literally I can say it is dynamics of heat transfer. Dynamics of heat transfer. But it is more of that, it is not only dealing with heat transfer, but it also deals with the basic processes and laws which govern all the physical processes which are occurring around us. All the natural processes which you take, there will be some thermodynamics involved. For example, if you take the case of a plant, if you take the case of a plant, it has leaves and what is the process by which it prepares their own food? What is the process known as? You take a plant, what is the process by which they synthesize the food? That is known as photosynthesis, right? Yes, photosynthesis. So, uh, with the help of light, with the help of light, there uh, the light energy is getting converted into some form with the help of the pigment such as chlorophyll, etc. There also heat transfer is involved and their internal energy transformation, etc. are taking place. So that one form of energy, which was sunlight, is getting converted to another form which is stored in the form of say food, for example, if it is a potato means it gets stored inside the root, isn't it? So similarly, there is transformation. So for all natural processes which you take, for example, the uh, blowing of wind, there occurs a pressure difference and therefore these winds etc. are um, blowing or they are generated, breeze, wind, anything, the major source of energy for earth is or in the universe the major source of energy is which one major source of energy which is the major source of energy in the universe or you can say with, with respect to earth from where we are getting yes you can say that sun is the major source of energy from sun there is which type of reaction occurring inside the sun? Which type of reaction is taking place inside the sun? Yes, this is fusion reaction, right? Fusion. There are fission, nuclear fission and fusion. Fusion reactions are taking place inside the sun, yes, which liberate a lot of heat energy and also light energy. So this, uh, how this um, energy is transferred from the sun to the other planets, that is how it is transferred, it is by means of, mainly by means of radiation, right, it is a form of heat transfer, yes, radiation. So this radiation is independent of the medium through which the heat gets transferred. Okay, so we were telling about uh, thermodynamics, so you know that it can be called as a science of uh, three E. It can be called as a science of three E's. For so first E, can anyone tell what does the first E refers to? First E refers to here you can see everywhere we are dealing with heat, light, uh, say chemical energy, etc. These are all some type of energy, right? Yes, right. For energy, this is a science which deals with energy, then equilibrium, equilibrium and the third one is a new term for you, I hope, I think you might have heard of this, have you heard of entropy? Entropy, have you heard of this term entropy? Yes. The first science of energy, equilibrium and entropy is what constitutes the thermodynamics. The thermodynamics. Okay. So for entropy, we will define entropy in the coming uh, classes. And energy, you know what is meant by energy. And next one is equilibrium. Equilibrium means, I will just give you an example. As a, uh, as a typical example, you can see, 
if you are if you are having some fever you go to the hospital and the thermometer is kept under your tongue and is it suddenly taken out is the thermometer suddenly taken off to your of your mouth no it is kept there for some time right so what is the purpose of that keeping that for a certain period of time what is the purpose or what is the purpose of a thermometer what is the purpose of a thermometer a thermometer is used to a thermometer is used to measure temperature right it is used to measure temperature yes so if i am having a hot body say it is at 50 degrees celsius is a hot body now uh, the room temperature is 30 degrees celsius means if i am having a thermometer you can see the thermometer will be like this will be having a bulb thermometric bulb and if it is mercury in glass thermometer means there will be a mercury column like this and the thermometer will be calibrated accordingly with different degree celsius unit okay i hope you know this mercury have you seen this mercury in a mercury inside the thermometer a thin line of mercury is there and can you uh, do you know the reason why mercury is used inside the thermometers why mercury is used inside the thermometers what is the reason behind using mercury inside the thermometer hg what is the peculiarity of mercury peculiarity of mercury surface tension no actually mercury is a liquid metal it is a liquid metal okay so this liquid metals what is the peculiarity of metals when it is heated what happens to metals when mercury gets heated yes it will expand it will expand so according to the expansion we can calibrate the temperature that we will learn when you study the temperature scale if this much length of mercury represents 10 degree celsius we will calibrate it and for some certain more length it may represent 30 degree celsius are you getting me this length that is the temperature is proportional to the length of the mercury like that i can calibrate the uh, thermometer okay so when it is in room temperature that means this mercury bulb bulb of the mercury thermometer is is in contact with the room te room temperature is in contact with the air yes good evening mugesh yes we have just uh, discussing some of the basic things that we can see around us okay just some examples related to thermodynamics we have only started up to 10 minutes okay you can go through the recorded session mukesh those 10 minutes you can go through it okay it's fine anyway you have joined i thought you might have uh, forgotten about the class that's why i called you yes so when this mercury thermometer is kept open to the room temperature the room temperature is 30 degree means we, what temperature will it indicate what will be the length of mercury in the thermometer it will also be 30 degree celsius am i right the length of mercury will be also at 30 degree celsius or what i can tell is this mercury thermometer and the room if this is the room i am which i am taking room air is in equilibrium with each other that means they are showing the same temperature if they are showing the same temperature 
I can say they are in equilibrium, right? Equilibrium means, in simple terms, if you are going to buy some items, you might have seen weighing balance, right? Weighing balance will be there. On one end, you are placing the weight, the already known weight you will place, 2 kilogram weight you will place there, on one end. On the other end, when you place the item, say if I am buying apples, means you will keep the apple there. So when you will uh, stop putting the apples in the basket, when this fulcrum get balanced, am I right? When the fulcrum get balanced, or in that case, you can see that the net force acting on both sides are getting, net force acting on the both sides are getting balanced. All, your, all of you getting me? Yes. The forces are getting balanced means now this is this balancing is termed as equilibrium. In simple terms I am explaining that is equilibrium refers to balancing. And here what I am balancing in this case when you are buying items you are using a weighing balance in that case you are balancing the forces. Agreed? You are balancing the forces. Therefore, these two systems, this I can say this one and two, if I am taking one and two, they are in mechanical equilibrium. I can tell that they are in mechanical equilibrium since the net force acting on them on each side is equal. Clear to you? Yes, I need the response. Yes, you can type C if, you, if it is clear. Okay. So that I can move forward. If there is any doubt, means you please choke me and ask. Feel free to ask. Okay. So here there is mechanical equilibrium. Now come to the case of a thermometer. This body is at 150 degrees Celsius. But I don't know this temperature, okay, this temperature is unknown, this is relatively hot, that means I can say it is red in color, red in color and it is at a higher temperature, I am going to measure this temperature value, this thing I don't know, this temperature I don't know, so I am going to measure, for measuring I need, I need an instrument, for which instrument I can use, I am having a mercury in glass thermometer, so I can use a thermometer, how do you, how can you find it out? Will it, uh, when it is placed like this, will it give you the temperature of body A? Will it give the temperature of body A? The, temper the thermometer is placed here, in the left hand side, and the body A is placed here. Will it give you the temperature if it is placed like this? For measuring the temperature, what I should do? This thermometer bulb has to be, this thermometer bulb has to be made in, yes, made in contact with the body A, right, made in contact with the body A. So, I am placing the thermometer like this. Therefore, what will you expect the length of, say, till now it was here, the mercury column was still here. When you are placing it, Will it suddenly give you the temperature of the body, body A? Will it suddenly give you the temperature? No. It will not give, suddenly give, but you can see that slowly the mercury column will rise. The length of mercury will increase. When it is placed like this, if the mercury column in the thermometer will rise and you need to keep it for some time. That's why when you are having fever, the thermometer is kept inside under your tongue for a certain period of time and then after that it is taken out. So what you are actually doing there, you are trying to balance the temperature of the body to be equal to the temperature of the thermometer. Am I right? So that they will get balanced and that reading in the thermometer will give you the actual temperature T of the body. 
this is how the measurement is taken or i can say that if both the bodies attain the same temperature then they are in if the both the bodies attain same temperature then they are in which type of equilibrium they are in thermal equilibrium yes thermal equilibrium so i think uh, i can uh, define shall we define zero to law shall we define zero to law now we have not gone to the properties etc but anyway uh, we shall just see what does zero to law of thermodynamics mean before that do you know why it is called zero to law <coughs> why it is called zero to law of thermodynamics any idea no okay so this laws of thermodynamics you will be learning four laws of thermodynamics that is zero first second and third these laws does not have any proof these laws does not have any proof these are not proved mathematically okay these are this, this does not have any proof at all but till date till date these laws are not found to be violated not found to be violated that means if a, that is there will be no process which will violate the laws which are laws of thermodynamics is clear every process will obey the laws of thermodynamics we are defining all thermal design systems everything based on these laws nothing will be violating these laws clear there is no mathematical proof okay now let us come to the case of zero to low that is if i am taking the zero to low if i am having three bodies say a b and c body a b and c this is body a this is body b and this is body c and a and b i am making it in contact a and b i am making in contact and they come in thermal equilibrium they come in thermal equilibrium they come in thermal equilibrium equilibrium means what for example see if you are having if you are having i i hope all of you know how tea is made you need milk and you need uh, say black tea okay if the milk is at 70 degree celsius and the black tea is at 20 degree celsius and in order to mix or form this tea what i should do i should mix milk and black tea right i should mix milk and black tea so i am mixing these two i am mixing these two if i am getting t now can you give me the temperature of this t will it be less than 30 degrees celsius will it be less than 30 degrees celsius no will it be greater than 70 degrees celsius no then what will be the range of temperature in which range it will be temperature of this t yes it will be in between 30 to 70 okay then says that it will be in between 30 to 70 can you all agree mukesh and polraj yes therefore you can see here there is a mixing process taking place 
and this finally both the temperature both the milk and the black tea this mixture will come to an equilibrium temperature am i right <coughs> they will both come to an equilibrium temperature in which there is no net heat transfer that is say if i am taking a body like this uh say this is of red color red color indicating high temperature and another body of green color okay now this is at a higher temperature means 100 degree celsius this is at 20 degree celsius when i am making this in contact from where to where the heat will transfer from where to where the heat will transfer yes from red to green that is higher temperature to lower temperature the heat will get transferred from higher temperature to lower temperature and this heat transfer process will continue so when this heat is getting transferred to the lower temperature body what will happen to the lower temperature body what will happen to the temperature of this green body will it be still 20 degree yes it will slowly increase right and what will happen to the temperature of red, red body what will happen to the temperature of red body yes it will decrease it will decrease therefore you can see that as heat flows the temperature of hot body decreases and temperature of uh, green body or cold body increases and till what point will it continue till what point will it continue till what point will the heat transfer continue yes till they become same temperature if there is temperature difference only heat transfer will take place that thing you should understand if there is heat temperature difference only then only the heat transfer will occur therefore this boson taking place like this means this may increase to 25 30 35 like that this will drop to 95 90 85 like that and finally say let me take that it comes to an equilibrium at 70 degree celsius that is both of them reaches 70 degree celsius then will there be heat transfer or change in temperature now will there be a change in temperature both have attained a equilibrium temperature so i can say that body a and body b are now in body a and body b are now in which type of equilibrium same temperature means which type of equilibrium yes they are in thermal equilibrium they are in thermal equilibrium okay so here you can see now if i am taking a body a a body b and another body c i am just telling that a and b from taking it separately they are in thermal equilibrium they are in thermal equilibrium that means what i can tell about temperature of a and temperature of b if a and b are in thermal equilibrium yes ca is equal to cb right and if i am taking these two bodies b and c b and c and they are also in thermal equilibrium they are also in thermal equilibrium separately that means cb is equal to cb is equal to cb is equal to cc right then what can you conclude from these two what can you conclude from these two yes 
टी एक्वल टू टी बीक्वल टू टी सी और राधा टी एस इक्वल टू टी सी टी एस इक्वल टू टी सी दैट मीन वॉट हेज है एंड सी आर इन ए एंड सी आर इन वॉट कैन यू टेल ए एंड बी आर इन थर्मल इक्विबियम बी एंड सी आर इन थर्मल इक्विबियम सेपरेटली देन यू कैन से दैट A and C are in thermal equilibrium, right? A and C are in thermal equilibrium. So this is known as zero law of thermodynamics. This is known as zero law of thermodynamics. And why it is called zero law is after formulating the first two laws, only we formulated this law, but since it forms the basis or the base of all the other laws we place it above first law understood because of the importance of the law we gave it a hierarchy in top order first second etc laws were formulated first but later on only this zeroth law of thermodynamics was formulated and the name zeroth law was given due to its relative importance because it forms the basis of temperature measurement zero the law forms the sometimes question are asked which is the which law forms the basis of temperature measurement okay is it clear up to here zero the law of thermodynamics means if a If there are three bodies A, B, and C, A and B are in thermal equilibrium, and B and C are in thermal equilibrium separately. Um, again, um, specifying the term separately means they are not having any contact with them. Okay, then what you can infer A and C will be in thermal equilibrium. Got it? So this forms the basis of temperature measurement. Now I have told you that this forms the basis of temperature measurement. Do you know any device used for temperature measurement? Do you know any device used for temperature measurement? Yes, obviously, thermometer. Thermometer. So, can you tell me what are that components A, B, and C in a thermometer? I will give you this this example. This is body A, body A at an unknown temperature, at a higher temperature. So, this temperature is unknown, and the thermometer is kept here with the thermometric bulb, and this is the mercury length. So when it comes in contact me, if here the temperature uh, measurement the degree Celsius values will be given. So when it comes in contact, means due to this heat transfer, it will expand. Since this is mercury, this is liquid metal, this will expand and reach some point. And when these two becomes equal, when the temperature of A and temperature here becomes equal, it will mean equilibrium, which will be body. So oh, this is body A, agree? This is body A, and I can say that this mercury column, mercury column is body B. Okay, then which is body C? Or mercury column is body C, then which is body B? Which one will be body B? Any idea? No. See here, you get uh, uh, here. Yes, the tip of thermometer. That is that is known as the. Bulb of thermometer, it will be silver in color. Have you noticed? Silver in color, the bulb of thermometer. That is body B. So what is actually happening? If this is at 
50 degrees Celsius means initially the thermometer is kept at a room temperature. I am just taking out the thermometer from a box and keeping it. So initially it will be 30 degrees Celsius. But when it comes in contact, first what should happen? This body A and this mercury bulb temperature should come to the same temperature level. Right? That is body A and B should be in equilibrium. So due to this bulb getting heated up, that is why that heat gets transferred to the mercury column and it expands and finally it will show you a reading. So this is C. So C and D are in equilibrium. B and A are in equilibrium. Then what I can say? The length C is actually giving you the temperature A or C and A are in equilibrium. Then only I can say that C is actually giving you the value of temperature of the body A. This I don't know. This is 60 degrees that I can get only from this reading, right? And this is how a simple temperature measurement device is calibrated and work and it works on the basis of zeroth law thermodynamics. Okay. Anyway, we will discuss it in little bit detail later on. Since it is an introduction class, I thought of just giving you some basic idea related to temperature measurement. Now we shall move on to say some fundamental concepts here. Can you see this? Anyway, it is written very in very small letters. This is actually meant as a short note. It is not the note for the for your study. It is after studying each section you can refer these so that a quick revision can be made. That's how I have made it. Okay. The notes are there separately. Here you can see the notes are there. This you can refer after each class. Clear. Okay. Now let us go to this some basic concepts. There is SI units of something, some fundamental uh, dimension. Length, I hope all of you know. Length, what is SI unit of length? SI unit of length is yes, meter. What about area? What about area? This represents the length meter. Area means L into V. So it will be meter square. Right? And what about volume? Volume. So this represents an area means in order to make it a volume, I should have one more dimension. Right? I should have one that is a box. A box will have a volume. Yes, box, the volume unit is meter cube. Then coming to force, yes, force, how do you define force? From which Newton's law we are defining force? Yes, Newton's second law of motion, Newton's second law of motion. Force is equal to mass into acceleration, mass into acceleration. Let us look in some uh, somewhat a sensible way. What is this? That is force is equal to mass into acceleration. Can you define the unit of force? What is the unit of force? Unit of force is Newton. Yes. Can you define one Newton? Can you define one Newton? That is here LHS I should get one. In order to get LHS 1, RHS also should be 1, right? So mass I can replace by, mass I can replace by, what is the unit 
yes 1 kilogram 1 kilogram into what about the unit of acceleration what about the unit of acceleration yes meter per second square acceleration is nothing but change of velocity dv by dt velocity means length by time the for meter per second divided by second or meter per second square for 1 meter per second square so you get 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second square so for if i am having a body of mass 1 kilogram and initially it is at rest okay initially it is at rest that means initial velocity is zero now in order that it attain some velocity in order that it attain some velocity what i should give to this body attain some velocity means it should start moving right this body should start moving what should be applied yes a force should be applied when i am applying a force suppose the body moves a distance of moves a distance of 1 meter in a time of in a time of 1 second in a time of 1 second then what will be the final velocity when i just gave a push the body of 1 kilogram moved from rest through a distance 1 meter in 1 second so can you find out the velocity <laughs> if you know the distance and time what will be the velocity yes velocity will be 1 meter per second agree mugundan and mugesh do you agree with paul raj yes so velocity is 1 meter per second now if that is the case here the change in velocity is how much initial velocity was zero final velocity is 1 meter per second so what about change in velocity 1 minus 0 yes what is the change in time in how much time this occurred 1 second therefore what will be the acceleration what will be the acceleration dv by dt or it is 1 meter per second square clear yes. therefore what i have done is i gave a push which resulted in an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in a body of mass in a body of mass 1 kilogram then how much will be that force how much will be that force applied yes that force applied is 1 newton understood you can visualize here that is if you are giving a force of 1 newton on a 1 kilogram body that will be resulting in an acceleration of 1 meter per second square this is what is meant by this equation got it the clear to you yes now next thing is pressure next point is pressure how do you define pressure how do you define pressure force acting on unit area right usually pressure is denoted by small c in thermodynamics we will be denoting p by small p is the pressure pressure is equal to force by area agree force acting per unit area so what will be the unit what will be the unit newton per meter square newton per meter square and 1 newton per meter square is equal to 1 pascal is equal to 1 pascal 
and there are other units for pressure also bar etc 1 bar is equal to how much pascal Then there is five pascal, and one atmospheric pressure is equal to how much pascal? One atmospheric pressure is equal to one zero one three two five pascal. This thing only we are approximating it as ten raised to five pascal. Okay. 1.01325 into 10 to 5 pascal, or I can write it as approximately 10 to 5 pascal. This is the atmospheric pressure at sea level. That means uh, when you take the sea level, you can see that above there there is a huge column of air, right? There is a huge column of air. So this air will be exerting a pressure, and when you are having a height h. density is known then how can you find out the pressure pressure, pressure is rho gh i think you know this pressure is rho gh from that you, will, you are getting at sea level the pressure is found to be 101325 pascal okay i i think you can keep a notebook for taking down the class notes also it will be beneficial for you later on Okay, some types of tips and some types of conversions, etc., may not be there in the. Everything may not be there. Even if it is there, means it will be here and there. Wherever it is needed, only it will be there. So according to your uh, relative importance, you can note it down. Whichever you are not sure or you don't know, that you can note it down, so that at the end you can have a quick look at your notebook. Okay. Yes. So. we were telling about pressure see the pressure unit 1 newton per mm square is equal to how much newton per meter square 1 newton per mm square is equal to how much newton per meter square Yes, ten raised to six. Ten raised to six. How it comes? One newton per mm means one millimeter is one millimeter is ten raised to minus three meters. Therefore, it will be I replace millimeter by meter. Ten raised to minus three the whole square, or it will be ten raised to six. This when it comes upwards, it will be ten raised to six newton per meter square. Okay, have you, can you uh, tell me? Uh, have you ever seen one millimeter square anywhere? Have you ever seen one millimeter square anywhere? One millimeter square area. One millimeter square area. How much it will be? Yes, in the graph sheet. The graph sheet you can see. The smallest column, the smallest of smallest column, that represents one millimeter square. Therefore, when the area decreases, what will happen to the pressure? For a constant force, if I am keeping force fixed, area decreases. What will happen to the pressure? For a constant force, that is, if I am say it is one newton, I hope you know what is this one newton. That force which made the body move to one meter per second in one second. That force, if I am applying on a one meter square, you can I think you can visualize how much is one meter square. This is the one meter square area. That force one newton if I am applying, that represents one newton per meter square. the same force the same force if i applied to this much smaller area what happened that is it became 1 newton acting on 1 mm square how much it got increased it became 10 raised to 6 times 
right? It became 10 raised to 6 times. Or I can say that it is 1 mega Pascal. 1 Newton per m millimeter square is 1 mega Pascal. Yes, just these things I am just telling you to have a uh, clear cut idea of what exactly pressure is, how it influences the uh, based on the application area, etc. Okay, let us move back to the unit. <laughs> yes, next one is energy. This is a very important term, energy. Once you know this, will be very much, these things you should be very clear. Uh, until then, unless you are clear with the specific uh, terms such as energy, work, force, etc., it will be very difficult for you to do the problem. Okay, so shall we move on to energy? Shall we move on to energy? Yes. So, energy, or you can see it is also the work. Energy and work is more or less the same. What is the unit of, or how do you define work? <coughs> how do you define work? In mechanics, you might have studied work is defined as force into distance or displacement. Therefore, how much will be, what is the unit of work? What is the unit of work? Yes, joule. Therefore, if one newton is applied, one joule means how much energy or how much in, uh, work? One newton moves the body through. One newton moves the body through one meter. Okay or 1 joule, yes, 1 joule is 1 newton meter. So, this energy, this is also uh, from energy, if you are taking a 100 watt bulb, okay, 100 watt bulb, there this watt represents which quantity, what is the unit of which quantity, if it represents joules per second or it is giving you the watt, is giving you the power, right, power. So, power is nothing but the rate of doing work or work divided by time or energy divided by time. So, it will be joules per second. For if one joule is being Joule of energy is being liberated by the bulb in one second. If one joule of energy is liberated in one second, then what will be the power of that bulb? What will be the power of that bulb? Yes, power of that bulb will be 1 watt. So, 100 watt means in one second it is liberating 100 joules of energy is liberating 100 joules of energy. Okay. Now, coming to energy, energy are of different forms. Energy are of different forms. Let us take one by one. First one is kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is due to the movement of the body. Okay, that is movement means there will be associated velocity and that is given by, kinetic energy is given by, how do you give the kinetic energy of a body? Yes, half m v e square. Next one is potential energy, potential energy. It is due to either strained condition or it is due to a, a certain height. Due to the height possessed by the body or due to the strain the body is undergoing. That is height H. And it is given by potential energy is given by 
MGH, right? MGH. Third one is third one. I can say it is the internal energy. Internal energy. Internal energy. Oh, it is usually represented by capital U. Okay. We will come to that internal energy. What it is? Next one is pressure energy. Pressure energy. Can you give me the expression for pressure energy? Can you give me the expression for pressure energy? Yes. Now let us let me uh, ask you one thing. What is the unit of all these things? What is the unit of all these things? All these quantity. What is the unit? Yes, joule is the unit of all these things. Yes, um, yes. I'm not getting the response from Paul Raj and Mugesh. I think you might be noting it down. Anyway, if there is any doubt, please feel free free to ask. Okay. You might be uh, noting it down on the no, uh, on your paper. I I hope you are. That's why you are not responding. It's not because that is not clear. Is everything okay? Is it everything clear till now? Okay, fine. So let's continue. Yes, pressure energy. Yes, Mukundan says it's pressure in the volume. That's absolutely right. Let us see how it comes. Pressure. The unit of pressure is newton per. Meter square, newton per meter square. I'm going to find out the energy corresponding to this pressure. Energy corresponding to this pressure, and I know that joule is a unit of energy. And one joule, I can write it as newton meter force into distance. Agree? One joule, I can write it as newton meter. Therefore. This pressure, I need to convert it into newton meter. Means I should multiply with which term? I should multiply it with which term? Newton per meter square has to be converted to newton meter. Yes, it should be multiplied with meter cube. So newton per meter square is pressure T, and meter cube is the unit of which quantity? The quantity volume, yes, the quantity volume. So for, now, from now onwards, V E will be used for velocity. Capital V will be used for volume. Okay. So P V is the pressure energy. P V is the pressure energy. Okay. So let us now discuss what exactly is this. Is it clear these four forms of energy: kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy, and pressure energy? Is these four forms of energy clear? It's very important that you understand this. Okay, you understand each of these quantities, and each of these quantity when you convert this into SI unit, you will get this joule. Okay, fine. Now, next thing is internal energy. What is meant by internal energy? So, everything uh, when you are trying doing this type of course, uh, you should uh, visualize everything that is in the practical sense. Then it will be very you can relate it to the physical process and you can understand the concept very clearly. Let us uh, take an example of. See, I am taking a vessel. 
and I am filling it with some water and keeping it in a burner, keeping it on a burner. Okay. So initially the temperature of water before keeping it on the burner will be which temperature? Yes, will be the room temperature. And I am dipping a thermometer in it so that initially it indicated 30 degrees Celsius. Now when I am supplying this heat, when I am supplying this heat, what will happen? What can you notice? You can notice that the temperature will rise. Yes, the temperature will rise. And the temperature keeps on rising as the heat is being supplied. So this heat, now here you can see that the molecules are gaining this heat. Right? The molecules are gaining this heat. They are, they are taking this energy and they are going from one end to another like this. They are going from one end, one end to another. And after some time, then the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius. What can you tell? When the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, what can you tell? <coughs> yes, if, if this will boil. Yes, this will boil. Okay. So, yes, this is uh, another section that is called the pure section. Anyway, I will try to give you some idea regarding that. What is the pressure acting on this? What is the pressure acting on the system? Yes, atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is acting on this. Therefore, I am defining boiling point. Please listen carefully. I am defining boiling point as that temperature. This you should not define it as that point. It is not at all a point. It is a temperature. Boiling point is a temperature at which at which the saturation pressure the pressure saturation pressure will be equal to atmospheric pressure will be equal to atmospheric pressure that is or saturation or I can say more clearly vapor pressure let me tell you what exactly it is So, when this initially when you heat this water, you can see that initially some vapors will be generated. Have you noticed? Some vapors will be generated during the initial phase of heating. Am I right? That is, those molecules which are at a higher energy level we need some little bit of heat energy so that it gets converted to initially it is at liquid form now it gets converted to vapor form right it gets converted to vapor form so this vapor at this interface will exert a pressure on that interface the vapor which is formed as a result of as a result of heating for so these little bit vapors will exert a pressure on this interface. Are you getting me? Is Mugundan, Paul Raj and Mugish? <coughs> that is, uh, if I am taking water, then I am heating it. Initially, have you noticed some little bit of vapor going from this top side? when you are boiling water it will not boil all of a sudden some vapors will be generated right 
and afterwards only after when the temperature reaches 100 degrees celsius only the it boils as a whole thing for here you can see that there are two processes that is evaporation and boiling these are two different processes this evaporation is actually a surface phenomenon okay then this evaporation takes place some amount of vapor is generated and this vapor will in turn exert a pressure on the interface and that pressure is known as vapor pressure okay and that pressure is known as vapor pressure then this vapor pressure that is when you keep on he heating the liquid or water more and more amount of vapor will be generated the so what will happen to what vapor pressure what will happen to vapor pressure yes it will increase it will increase and keep on increasing and from here which pressure is acting what is the pressure acting from the outside <laughs> what is the pressure acting from the outside that is atmospheric pressure yes atmospheric pressure then this vapor pressure keeps on increasing and when this vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure equals the atmospheric pressure then what will happen this whole unit whole liquid as a unit will start to boil got it that's how we define boiling point boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure is the concept clear to you yes if that is the case let me ask you one question suppose i am taking a huge container huge uh, dome or huge room in which the pressure inside is pressure inside is three atmosphere it is not one atmospheric pressure it is three atmospheric pressure i am keeping a the similar experiment i am doing it i am keeping a vessel full of water and i am heating it okay and uh, the temperature is measured using a thermometer so in the normal when it is open to atmosphere and it open it is now it is a closed room closed room pressurized room at about 3 atmosphere or 3 bar when it is kept open means it is subjected to only one bar okay and what about what was the temp boiling temperature what was the boiling temperature when the pressure was one bar yes when the pressure was one bar the boiling temperature is 100 degrees celsius yes now let us take this case case 2 what can you tell about the boiling temperature will it be equal to 100 degrees celsius will it be greater than 100 degrees celsius or will it be less than 100 degrees celsius is moving in phase is greater than 100 degrees celsius what about the other two not sure okay that means here you can see the they here the atmospheric pressure is how much 3 bar okay therefore when we are this molecules water molecules will try to they or oh, everyone need some freedom right in liquid state means they are somewhat suppressed it's one of three forms of basic forms of matter one is solid it is very closely packed and it is very much suppressed liquid means somewhat suppressed gas means the molecules are free to move they are at a very high level of freedom they are having a high level of freedom right therefore in liquid 
these are somewhat in a bonded state that is they are being pulled from other molecules when you are giving this heat energy what is happen they are converting to vapor and they can move they can move faster okay here comes the concept of internal energy that is here when you are supplying more and more heat which value is actually changing the temperature is changing am i right the temperature of the the molecules are changing higher the temperature means what can you tell about the movement of this molecules higher the temperature means they will be at a higher energized level yes therefore this will be moving at a higher velocity and high, if i am taking this uh, uh, large image these molecules will be moving at higher velocity because they are having higher energy okay therefore here what is the external pressure acting on system 3 bar earlier it was only 1 bar therefore for this molecules to jump out of this how much it should resist overcome the resistance of 3 bar clear it should overcome the resistance of 3 bar means the molecules should have more energy right earlier the outside pressure was only how much 1 bar about 100 degree celsius itself they got enough energy level so as to surpass this and form what fully vapor whereas in this case in order that they get more energy they need more energy then only they can surpass the resistance offered by this external pressure of 3 bar am i right more energy level means what happens to the temperature of this liquid it should be more or less for getting more energy level it should have more temperature or less temperature yes it should have more temperature the temperature value should be more or what can you tell about boiling point when the pressure is increased When the pressure is increased, the boiling point also increases. Clear? So these are very fundamental concepts which you need to clear. Be clear so that you can uh, study the refrigeration part also very clearly. This is just the reverse of this which we are applying in refrigeration. Is it clear? Okay. now i was talking about the energy of the molecule right i was talking about the energy of the molecule now let us define this internal energy when i have taken this vessel when i have taken this vessel and heated it and heated it due to this heat addition is the vessel moving from one state to another state in this case in our normal boiling of water is a due to the heat is a vessel moving from one end to another is it moving no or a, is the vessel moving from one height to another height due to the heat addition no therefore there is no net change overall change in the if i am taking this as a system okay let us i will uh, define system and then we come back anyway i will just give you what is meant by internal energy so these molecules these molecules when it gets heated up when it gets heated up what will happen to the molecule these molecules are moving right at the molecular level these molecules are moving they are having some kinetic energy right at the molecular level please be very clear about this at molecular level all the molecules due to this heat addition are moving from one to end or they are having a higher potential energy and these molecules will 
spin this will rotate therefore there will be spin energy rotational energy and if it is there is a bonding between molecules means if it is o2 there is a double bond therefore there will be a vibrational energy translational energy kinetic energy these types of energy levels at the molecular level these i am summing up together okay all the molecular level energy i am summing up together and calling it as internal energy u we can see that it is internal of the system energy of the internal system okay it is associated with the internal composition so it is known as internal energy and this internal energy is dependent on which parameter is dependent on which parameter if i am having a water at 30 degrees celsius and water at 100 degrees celsius it will have more internal energy it will have more internal energy yes those those water molecules at 100 degrees celsius so i can say that internal energy is a function of is a function of temperature right is a function of temperature <coughs> okay i think we can have a 10 minute break and after that we can move on to the basic definitions of thermodynamics if there is any doubt means please ask now i have tried my best to convey the idea to you is it uh, clear are you able to get what i am trying to convey is called as in mugis is any doubt called as okay so we can um, continue after 10 minutes so please be back by 6:10 the basic terms okay can you see this can you see the notes is is it legible 
Mugation called as So thermodynamics, as we have seen, is the science of energy transfer and its effect on the physical properties of substances. And it has been formulated based on the observations into certain laws. And basically, it deals with energy, entropy, and equilibrium. So thermo means heat, and dynamics refers to motion or movement. So it really means dynamics of heat transfer. Next, coming to the next section, these are all some theory parts. Macroscopic thermodynamics and microscopic thermodynamics. Therefore, if I am not considering anything, that is, uh, if I am just taking, have you seen pressure gauges? Have you seen pressure gauges? Pressure gauges used to measure the pressure? Yes. Therefore, there, is there, in, there will be a pipeline and this uh, pressure gauge is attached there. Am I right? Therefore, here in this pipeline, the flow is taking place. Therefore, overall behavior of the molecules is being measured using this pressure gauge. There, we are not concentrating on each and individual molecule. Overall gross behavior of the molecules are taken. If such an approach is carried out, that refers to macroscopic. Macro means high level. Micro means at the molecular level. From the name itself, we can see when the study is carried out at molecular level, that refers to microscopic. Whereas, if I am considering it as a gross behavior of all the molecules, then that is known as macroscopic thermodynamics, which is a certain quantity of matter is considered without events considering at occurring at the molecular level. That is known as macroscopic. Whereas, microscopic means if the matter is composed of a certain number of molecules. And behavior of the gas is described by studying the behavior of each molecule. That is, that if this consists of different molecules, the total behavior of the system can be summed as the uh, individual behavior of each molecule. And here we are concerned only with the effects that can be perceived by human senses. As this, uh, using pressure gauge, we can notice that the pressure is this much. That's all. We are not considering each and every molecule. Whereas in the case of more microscopic thermodynamics, each level, there is a position, momentum, velocity, vector of each molecule are carried out using some high level, high intensity study, that is such, such as electron beam microscope. So, such high level, molecular level studies are carried out and those collisions, etc., are studied. And since this is followed from the um, earlier years, uh, uh, whereas this microscopic study thermodynamics is developed of a modern age, therefore it is known as statistical. It is known as statistical means is what is meant by this statistics. There will be different data, right? And from that you are finding out the overall nature of the frequency, the mean, median, etc. Similarly, here that is different data. Instead of this different data, there are different types of molecules. Molecule A, B, C, etc. If you study the pattern of how these molecules are moving from one end to another, then you can describe the whole system based on the movement of each molecule. That's why it is known as statistical thermodynamics. Whereas, this is the classical way of the, uh, defining the thermodynamics or studying the behavior of uh, 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 the system. Therefore, it is known as classical thermodynamics. Usually, we are telling you, you following classical thermodynamics for highly uh, accurate analysis or in-depth study, we are using the method of microscopic uh, thermodynamics. That is, at the molecular level, electron level, etc. We are going for statistical thermodynamics. <laughs> and here we are um, not at all considering the assumptions. It is completely independent of the assumptions. Whereas the results of this classical thermodynamics, that is, this one, whatever we are getting at the gross behavior can be found or can be obtained by integrating the results that we are getting at the molecular level. That will be almost the same result that we are getting. Anyways, there will be some differences uh, due to the error that might occur when we are considering microscopic thermodynamics. The high level, high accurate analysis can be carried out by microscopic, but this is a highly 
expensive type of approach. I hope you get what an overall idea between microscopic and macroscopic approach. Now coming to the concepts and definitions of thermodynamics. First one is system, boundary and surrounding. For this, um, have you or uh, are, are you following cricket? I hope all of you know cricket, right? All of you are in the habit of watching cricket? Yes, Paul Raj, Moonman. Yes, tomorrow there is a match between India and Pakistan at 7.30 a.m., right? Yes, is the voice clear, Volraj? <coughs> Tomorrow there is a match between India and Pakistan at 7.30 a.m. I hope all of you know some basic idea regarding cricket. If you know that uh, cricket, that means when the match is on, when the match is on, what you can tell, all the eyes, every, all the people are only concentrating inside the cricket field. Am I right? For that instance, not only cricket, any sport, say football, we are only concentrating what is happening inside that, inside that field. Right? Therefore, whichever thing where our focus is there or whichever on whichever material or matter on which our full attention is there, that can be called as the system. That can be called as the system. Okay. Now, everything other than the system forms the surrounding. Everything other than the system forms a surrounding. Therefore, you can see in the case of a cricket uh, game, there is a boundary rope, right? A boundary row which separates the field, field and the remaining thing. For so that thing which separates the system and the surrounding can be termed as boundary. Is these three terms clear to you? System, where we are, our attention is focused. Surrounding means everything else other than system. Boundary means which separates the system and the surrounding. Clear? And this boundary, this need not be a um, visible one. We can have an imaginary boundary also. Suppose I am in the space, if I am taking a certain region, I am only concentrating on this. It, it does not have a specified boundary, but I am just taking a invisible boundary. Clear? And this boundary can be flexible also. It can be flexible also. It's not that always it is rigid. Either it can be rigid like this, or it, sometimes if I if we are taking a jelly, if I am taking that jelly as the um, system, then if you just apply some force, means the jelly will vibrate, isn't it? Therefore, accordingly the boundary will also change. But is the matter changing there? Is the mass changing? The mass is not changing there, right? So these are all uh, some types of examples which uh, uh, form in, in, in simple terms, whichever we are concentrating upon, that is system, that's all. Whichever we are not interested, that forms the surrounding. Therefore, if this is the region I am considering, this is system, this is surrounding, then this total system plus surrounding, that forms universe. System plus surrounding that form universe. Okay, clear to you? Yes. Now we are going to classify the system. System can be classified as open system, closed system, and isolated system. Systems can be classified as open system. Closed system and isolated system. For example, let us, I am taking a tea, hot tea in a cup and the cup is open. 
okay so here initially the temperature of the tea was say 55 degrees celsius after say one hour will it be still 55 degrees celsius ambient temperature is say uh, 30 degrees celsius will it still be 55 degrees celsius Will the temperature of the D be still 55 degrees Celsius after some time? After some time the temperature will decrease and finally it will become how much? Finally it will become how much? Yes, it will become room temperature. That is finally it will become uh, get converted to 30 degrees Celsius itself. So how this temperature drop has occurred because heat has been transferred from the high temperature region to low temperature region. That is if, uh, if you are holding this cup you can feel the heat. Right? When you are holding the cup you can feel the heat of the yes through the boundary through the boundary. The, the heat flow from the hot tea to your hand if you are holding it. The, the, at that point of time you can feel that the heat when you are wrapping it, you, you, it around with your hand that is that hot hotness you can feel it right. Therefore there is energy transfer. Can I tell there is energy transfer? Yes. Now this initially when you are keeping the tea, you can see that some vapors are going out of this hot tea. Have you noticed? Yes, usually in cartoons etc. we are um, you are using these vapors to indicate that the hot tea is hot, right? Therefore some, in this vapor also is having some mass. Agreed? The vapor is also having some mass. Therefore, the, this mass of the T, will it be the same after some time? Will it be the same? No, because the mass is being carried away by this vapor. Some uh, water vapor or some T is getting evaporated. So, mass is getting reduced. So, in this system, if I am considering an open cup of T, an open cup of T, there is mass transfer and there is energy transfer. Mass transfer and energy transfer. This type of, this type of system are known as open system. Understood? This type of system are known as open system. Clear? Yes. Now suppose I am closing the cup with a lid. I am closing the cup with a lid. Will there be any mass transfer? No. When you are opening it after some time you can see that some water droplet will be there on this plate, on the lid, right? The vapor would have condensed on the plate. On the bottom of the plate, you, when you are opening it, you can see that. I think you, you might have seen when you are uh, doing cooking. You are closing the vessel with a lid. The water droplet will be there at the bottom of the lid. Okay. That means there is no mass transfer. But will the temperature be still 55 degrees Celsius when it when the uh, when the cup is closed? If it is closed means will it be at uh, 55 degrees Celsius? No. Naturally it will be uh, conducted through this heat, uh, through this wall, right? The heat will be getting transferred through this wall. And finally the temperature will also become room temperature. The temperature will become room temperature itself. Therefore, is there an energy transfer in this case? Is there any energy transfer in this case? Yes, energy transfer is there, but what about mass transfer? Is there any mass transfer? No, because everything is closed. 
we are closing it from all ends. The fourth, fresh type of system is known as closed system. Closed system means there is no mass transfer, but there can be energy transfer. Got it? Is it clear? Yes. Next, the last one is isolated system. That is, I am using a thermoplast and I am pouring this hot tea in it and I am closing that. This is a thermoplast. Okay. And the tea at 55 degrees Celsius is kept there. So, what I can tell, is there any mass transfer? Is there any mass transfer? No. Is there any energy transfer? Will the temperature decrease? When it is kept inside a flask, will the temperature of T decrease? Yes. Are you sure? When you are taking it the next day, will it be still 55 degrees Celsius? If you are keeping it in a flask, will it be at 55 degrees Celsius for all of the time? Yes, it will reduce. It will reduce. But for some time, say for, uh, say for one hour, etc., it can maintain it at 55 degrees Celsius itself. Am I right? That is, which factor will influence the time for which it is, uh, which is not allowing the heat to get transferred? Which factor? This time is one factor, but the next one is insulation, right? The, if the flask is perfectly insulated, if it is fully insulated means the heat transfer can be reduced. Am I right? the heat transfer can be reduced. So, uh, I can say that thermoflask for a smaller time interval can be considered as a, for a small time interval can be considered as a isolated system. Okay. But what about the universe? Is there anything outside the universe? Is there anything outside the universe? Everything is inside the universe itself, right? Therefore, there will not be transfer from the universe outside because there is no, nothing like outside the universe. Everything is taking place inside. Therefore, universe as a whole can be considered as an isolated system. Are you getting me? Universe as a whole can be considered as an isolated system. Okay. So, let us uh, see once again what is meant by open system. Open system means matter crosses the boundary. There may be energy transfer also. For example, air compressor, turbine, human beings. Yes, human beings, we inhale air and we exhale air. So, both mass and both energy is being transferred. Air compressor. If this is a compressor, yes, why we are, this is the usual notation for compressor. Why we are using this symbol? Larger end here and smaller end here. Anyone? For a compressor, we are using like this, denoting using this symbol. Compressor, what is the meaning of compressor? Is comp pressurizing or the volume is getting reduced, right? Higher volume is getting compressed to a lower volume. So here there is higher volume and here there is lower volume. That's why we are using this. And for turbine means in turbine, what is happening? This is the usual symbol used for turbine. Here, there is expansion. Expansion taking place. That's why volume is increased. Okay. So, in the compressor and turbine, you can see, in the case of turbine, if it is hydraulic turbine, water is coming from a high end and it hits the blade, rotates it, and the low energy level water is going out. So, mass is entering and mass is leaving. Mass transfer is there and due to the rotation of this blade, the shaft also rotates and this shaft is coupled to 
in a hydroelectric power plant the shaft of the turbine will be coupled to the in a hydroelectric power plant the shaft of the power, uh, turbine will be coupled to the generator okay generator and we will be getting the electricity therefore we are getting some energy transfer also so there is both energy transfer and mass transfer so it is a type of turbine compressors etc type of wish system turbine compressors etc type of yes turbine compressors are, are examples of open systems right next one is closed system <coughs> Have you all seen syringe? Have you all seen syringe? You for taking injection? Yes. There will be a piston like this, and there will be a needle. Suppose I am removing this needle, and I am closing this end. I am closing this end, and this is full of air, full of air. When I am pushing this piston, what will happen? Will the position of piston from one, will it go to two? Will it go to two? When I am pushing this piston through this end, will the piston move from one to two? when the fluid inside is air and the fluid inside is air yes because air is compressible air is compressible right air is compressible whereas if it was full of water yes full of water then will i be able to go to the position 2 I can somewhat go slightly little bit, or it is water or liquids are almost liquids are almost incompressible, incompressible. <coughs> okay. So if I am taking a piston cylinder assembly, I hope you know piston cylinder assembly. Yes, piston cylinder assembly. Do you know piston cylinder assembly? It is similar to a syringe. A syringe which you are seeing is what about others? I am not getting the response. Yes. Have you seen a piston cylinder assembly? IC engines. Have you seen the internal so uh, IC engine, I, internal combustion engines? Within uh, advertisement, you might have seen the piston is moving like this, up and down. Isn't it, Mukesh? Yes. For just a cylinder, just a cylinder, and in that there is a piston. The piston can move up and down. Clear. Yeah. Okay, because this is very important because every process we are trying to explain with this typical example of piston cylinder assembly. Okay. That is, uh, just I am drawing the front view. If this is the uh, cylinder, and this represents the piston. Okay. Now here I am taking. Yes, what about others, Mugesh and Mugundan, is the voice clear? Okay. So, when uh, if the, the piston is here and the cylinder is the outer surface, actually this is this form, a cylinder and a piston. I am just drawing the front view. Now, in this case, the air is trapped inside it. Air is trapped inside it. And if I am heating this end, heating this end, 
what will happen to the energy of the air molecules what will happen to the energy of the air molecules initially if it was 30 degrees celsius when i am heating it it will rise right the temperature of the system will rise therefore which energy will rise when i am heating it which energy will rise yes internal energy will rise internal energy of the system rise therefore is there any energy transfer is there any energy transfer in this case yes but you can see at the top there is piston it is closed by piston is the mass leaking out of this will the mass leak out of this if it is a perfectly closed piston there is no mass leakage means i can take it as mass transfer will there be any mass transfer will there be any mass transfer there is no mass transfer but there is energy transfer therefore this case is an example of which system this case is an example of which system closed system right it is an example of closed system right okay now i hope you have understood open closed and isolated system next we move on to two other terms that is control volume and control mass control volume and control mass it's very simple unless you understand it that is if i am taking let us take the example of control mass okay if i am considering a certain ball a cricket ball okay this is what i am studying uh, where it moves where, where if it moves from this position to it rolls to, to this position so i am just concentrating on this mass okay and just concentrating on this mass and sometimes after getting hit this uh, shape of this uh, ball can be like this okay it can change am i right after severe hitting and uh, bouncing the shape of the ball can change clear initially when it is a new ball the ball will be perfectly round but after some time it may become somewhat oval shape but is the mass changing is the mass changing is the mass changing under this condition there is only change in the shape but the mass is kept constant are you getting me whenever i am considering any system that mass is not changing the mass is kept constant but there is change in shape or change in volume i can say that there is change in volume for that instance then then uh, it will be very clear when i am telling about the piston cylinder assembly i think mugundan and mugesh didn't get it okay let this be the case let this um, there is air inside this piston cylinder assembly air is entrapped here okay when i am heating it what do you expect the air molecules will have more energy and it will push the piston right it will push the piston is mugundan and mugesh are you there is there any problem with the net connection i think i'm not getting the response quickly okay can you uh, hear me now hello yes so let us take a piston cylinder assembly here 
air is there. And I am heating it. I am supplying some heat. That is, I am heating it with the help of a burner. So, initial this much is the volume. If this is the uh, length, say L1, and if the diameter of the is actually a cylinder, okay, diameter of the cylinder is D, then what will be the at the position 1? What will be the volume? What will be the volume at position 1? If D is the diameter, then area of cross section is 5 by 4 D square into volume. In order to find out the volume, I should multiply it with L, right? Yes, 5 by 4 D square into L1. Yes, 5 by 4 D square into L1, that is the volume. And I am heating it these molecules will get energized and it will push the piston upwards. This is a freely moving piston. So, now after some time the position of the piston will be here. Agreed? The position of the piston will be here. Therefore, now the volume of the volume occupied by the air is this much. That is V T is the total length from the bottom is L2 and I am heating it initially the piston position was 1 due to the energy of the molecules this freely moving piston is pushed upwards to point 2. Therefore, volume 2 is 5 by 4 d square into L2. Agree? And is the mass changing here? Is the mass changing here? Mass of air. Whatever mass was here, the same mass is now occupying a different volume. Isn't it? Same mass is occupying different volume. Or how do you define density? How do you define density? Mass divided by volume. Mass divided by volume. Yes. Therefore, initially, if I am writing rho 1, mass is same, m divided by v1, and finally it is rho 2 is m divided by v2. Which is higher, rho 1 or rho 2? Which is higher, rho 1 or rho 2? Yes. Rho 1 is higher. Because you can just see, here the density is more. More molecules are occupying less space, isn't it? More molecules, are, there is more, much of a crowded like thing, crowded region. But when the same molecules is occupying larger space means the crowdedness decreases or density decreases. Rho is equal to mass by volume. Volume decreases means rho increases. That is, it becomes more dense. Whereas, if volume increases means it becomes less dense. The chance of finding a molecule at a particular location is less. Clear to you? Yes. In this case, you can see that we were concentrating upon a particular mass. First position of the mass is m, second position of the mass is m. We are concentrating on the or studying a particular mass or we are keeping the mass constant. Right? We are keeping the mass constant. But is the volume constant? Is the volume constant? No. Therefore, this type of approach is known as control mass. That is, mass is our, in our control. Control mass approach. Clear to you? Control mass approach. So, this will be suitable for which type of system? 
open closed or isolated this will be suitable for which type of system yes it will be suitable for closed system right agreed magesh and kolraj ubudan says is that this type of analysis that is control mass analysis is suitable for closed system yes fine now let us move to control volume that is very important because more much of derivations are there in control volume that is let us take the case of a turbine a turbine with a shaft i hope you all of you have seen turbine is it yes so there will be blades like this rotor and stator etc will be there and high energy fluid will be entering here high energy fluid will be entering the turbine and it will hit this blade and it will rotate the shaft the shaft will rotate and this is coupled to generator and electricity is produced and finally it the uh, fluid energy is low energy right low energy fluid will be leaving the turbine okay but so what how, where does the energy of the fluid go where does the energy of the fluid go the energy of the fluid is transferred to this shaft or to the blade of the turbine yes it converts to work we are getting work output so work output if there is no loss means i can say that energy work output is energy out inlet minus energy outlet of the fluid agree so in this type of um, say in this type of analysis we cannot keep the mass constant we cannot follow a particular mass isn't it we are not following a particular mass therefore so what we will say that we will select a certain region we will select a certain region so this is the region that is i have specified this is the boundary and something is entering this boundary something is leaving this boundary okay therefore this volume or space is fixed volume or space is fixed on which i am studying the type of uh, uh, motion or i am uh, my full attention is focused on this particular volume and this type of approach is known as control volume approach this type of process is now this type of approach is known as control volume we are fixing the volume clear to you okay so let us uh, move to the next one then property what is meant by property property means the characteristic of a system by which its physical condition can be described that is known as property for example again i am taking the example of a piston cylinder assembly anyone who does not understand this piston cylinder assembly please tell me now everyone clear with the piston cylinder assembly mugesh kolraj okay then so so earlier i have told you initially the piston position was 1 therefore i know i can uh, if i am having a pressure gauge i can measure the if i am having a pressure gauge i can measure the pressure right the pressure this molecule is exerting on this okay now when i am heating it when i am heating it the so volume i can find out by volume is equal to area into length l1 this much is the length means area into length is the volume pressure is p1 that i can measure using a pressure gauge for this uh, now how, how can i define the state of the system what is the state of the system i can say that it is at state 1 and how do you define a state 
you define a state with respect to its some values right state one what is the volume volume is v1 and the pressure is p1 like that i can tell clear to you see any any place if you are taking tamil nadu tamil nadu is located at a certain la longitude and latitude like that i can locate similarly here any system the state how i am how i am representing i need some values i need the values uh, volume I, i should know the pressure i should know then i can describe the position or the state of the system okay now when i am heating it when i am heating it what is happening it has gone to a new position right it has gone to a new position and there the volume v2 is is it the same v1 is it the same initial volume v1 yes or no heating it the new position is 2 is it the same volume v1 earlier the volume was only this much now the volume is this much right so v2 is greater than v1 and what about p2 what can you tell about p2 when the when it expands what will be the pressure Yes, when the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Clear? Yeah, when the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Is that clear to you? Is Mukundar and Polraj? Yes. That is more volume means the pressure is less. Less volume means pressure is more. Okay. so these all are some uh, certain values which describe the system state of the system that is known as properties so if there are properties means i can define the state okay the change of state means any operation therefore in here there is an expansion means it has changed from state 1 to state 2 that is change of state now part means how this process is carried out that is what is meant by path okay let let me uh, represent it with a graph so that you will be understanding it better suppose initially the volume is 10 meter cube the pressure is say 20 bar this is the position of the piston so i can draw now i am going to draw the property diagram i am going to draw the property diagram property diagram means any graph which relates properties here i am just taking volume v1 is this much p1 is this much i am drawing a pv graph pressure versus volume graph okay if this is uh, say 10 20 30 like that and volume is again 5 10 15 25 like that so for 20 10 means it will come 20 10 here will be the position state 1 this is state 1 agree all of you Still, there is more pressure here. This piston is exposed to atmosphere. So, what is the pressure acting here? Yes, one atmosphere pressure, one bar. So, naturally, the piston will be pushed upward. Am I right? Naturally, the piston will be pushed upward because from uh, there is a net force in this direction. is the air is compressed at a pressure of 20 bar and it is inside this piston means 
when i'm suddenly releasing this piston naturally it will be pushing upwards and let it uh, reach a position 2 let the piston reach a position 2 at which the volume will be say 20 meter cube and pressure what can you tell about pressure will it be less than 20 bar or greater than 20 bar when the volume increases the pressure exerted on the piston here less volume means more number of molecules are exerting more pressure yes when the volume increases the intensity of pressure will decrease because all the molecules are just wandering here and there so for the intensity of pressure will decrease so the pressure let it decrease to 5 bar now i can plot the second state what is the second state second state is say 20 means here and 5 bar means here so this is the second state so there is a change of state from 1 to 2 and fast means which this 1 to 2 i can go from here to here i can go through this path i can go through this path i can go follow a straight line so there are different paths isn't it i can move from one end to another through different paths we are moving from one city to another city there may be a number of paths like that here there is moving from one state to another there are different paths and according to the path followed we have different processes okay according to the path followed we will have we will be defining different different processes i hope you got the a, a little bit idea about what is meant by uh, property property means anything that is um, specifying the physical condition of a system state means if i know the definite values of the properties i can plot the state of the system then change of state means it is moving to another state another condition then path means the path followed in reaching the second state and depending upon the path we can define which process has been occurred whether whether the process has occurred at constant temperature whether the process has occurred at constant pressure where whether it was adiabatic like that different types of processes are there okay got it you got a little bit idea about this property state um change of state process etc is it clear is the graph clear to you we are just representing the state or the condition of this system this is our system initially it was like this finally it is like this yes i have plotted it state 1 and state 2 that's all is it clear to you So I think uh, today we can uh, stop. I will be uploading uh, this notes to just go through whatever we have covered till now, and I would uh, like all of you to once again go through this recorded session because we have just covered the basics of basics. Okay, this fundamentals. By next class we will move on to the major topic. Is clear? and i expect uh, somewhat more quicker response from your side because i am not able to understand whether you are following it or not that's why i am again repeating whether it is clear or in is it uh, are you having any doubt etc okay so again i am repeating that it is a more of a physical uh, processes related subject and there is a problem or interpret so i need your full cooperation from your side you should go through the notes you should go through the notes and the recorded session 
uh, if they are having any doubt means you please stop me there itself otherwise if you go move on how many classes is required approximately um we let it me take the syllabus uh see here we have um, these things i think we can cover it in uh, four hours four or five hours okay then second row availability etc we will need around uh, eight hours and closure clapeyron equation property relations is two or three hours two to three hours is all okay Vapor cycle, gas turbines, etc. Again, six hours will be needed. Hygrometry mixture, again, six hours will be needed. That is how much hours till now? Five plus eight, thirteen, thirteen, sixteen, twenty-two, twenty-eight hours. And heat transfer, I think we will again require the same amount of hours. That is around thirty hours will be required. So approximately 60 hours will be required for the complete in the whole syllabus. Okay. Uh, where we can get a reference book and which others? Okay. Uh, you can follow. Say, uh, if you are more interested in uh, problem solving, etc. That is from the exam point of view. You can follow PK now, but if you read for the first time, you may not understand it. But after the class, if you read it, you will be able to grasp it. Okay. For more understanding of the concepts, etc., you can follow Unis Sengel, Sengel and Bohr. Thermal engineering thermodynamics by Unit Sengel and Bohr. And for this uh, heat transfer, I think R K Rishput. R K Rishput will be R K Rishput or such day. These two books you can follow. For exam point of view, no need of these books. You just uh, go through our notes and record uh, and our attend the live session. And In between, I will be sending you some tutorials that you should complete it and send me back. That's all. And I expect uh, the whole cooperation from your side, as uh, we had in the design uh, course, so that it will be beneficial for you. Okay. So please go through the notes. I shall upload the first two uh, notes. Please go through that and also the recorded session. Because since uh, you, you might be new to this area, means it might be somewhat difficult. Yes. Is there any suggestions uh, so that I can um, make corrective changes? Yes. Uh, this is my specialization. I have did my M Tech in thermal engineering, right? Yes. Uh, anything that you need to uh, change or modify so that it will be much better in conveying it to you. At the beginning itself, if you are able to correct me, uh, correct myself means it will be good. Okay. So this timing is it uh, okay for all of you? Saturday, four thirty to seven thirty is the timing. Yes. Uh, uh, let me see. After say one and a half minutes or extra. Minutes or extra. June. Let me uh, 
मार्च अप्रैल में थ्री मंथ तक है इन जून फर्स्ट वीक कि वी विल कंटिन्यू विद दिस सैटरडे क्लास इटसेल्फ अप टू अप्रैल सेकंड वीक और थर्ड वीक एंड लेट अस सी हाउ मच पोर्शन वी कैन कंप्लीट बट आफ्टर दैट इफ वी आर नॉट मेकिंग इट अप अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर प्लान बी सम फ्राइडे सो आल्सो आई माइट टेक ओके दैट्स द रिमेनिंग थिंग एनीवे अप टू अप्रैल वी विल बी गोइंग बाय जस्ट द सैटरडे क्लास so uh so then uh, thank you good night